DeepSeek's R1 took the AI world by storm when it dropped earlier this year in January. That was six weeks ago, but it is still the top open source rival to models from giants like OpenAI and Google. Open source means more privacy, greater control, and lower inference costs. But deploying a model like R1 on your own hardware can be a nightmare. Well, that doesn't have to be the case if you use Modal. With Modal, developers can run models like R1 fast, at scale, and without the hardware headaches. In this video, I'm going to walk you through setting up R1 on Modal, so let's jump into it. Check out the full tutorial on the Modal website. I'll link to this post in the Git repo below. I just want to cover a couple of high level concepts before we run the actual example. Number one is that we need to specify the version of R1 that we want to use. In this case, we're using a quantized version of DeepSeek R1 that comes in at about 130 gigs of memory. Pretty sizable, but that's just 20% of the full R1 version. And in order for us to run this model, we're initiating this model application with four L4OS GPUs. That gives us about 190 gigs of memory, which is enough space to store the model weights and also do some of the other work that we need to do in order to run inference. Now, the great thing about modal applications is that they're ephemeral. That means that they spin up when you need them and they spin down when they're not in use. And that's a big deal because it eliminates the cost of idle hardware. You only pay for the computer compute when you're actually running inference, not for GPUs sitting around 24 seven. However, for model weights, we do want to store those in something that persists across different sessions and different applications rather than having to re-download the model every time we want to run inference. And to do that, we're initiating a volume where we're gonna be downloading our model weights to and then we're gonna be checking that volume for those weights every time we run the application. If the weights aren't there, then we'll download the model as needed. This will persist across different sessions, and for the moment, it's free to use. And the last thing to note here is that we're leveraging Llama CPP, a C++ library, to help us run inference on large language models like R1. There's a lot more detail in this example, so again, link to the full write-up and the Git repo below, go check it out. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. I've gone ahead and cloned the repo. I also pre-downloaded the model weights as well so we could just move on to inference. The default prompt for this tutorial is going to be to generate the code for a Flappy Bird game, but you can also put in your own custom prompt using this argument. And here I'm gonna be asking the classic question of how many R's are there in the word strawberry just to test things out. So let's go ahead and run that and you'll see the modal application start to spin up and I can actually head over to my modal dashboard as well and you'll see this pick up as well. So the first thing that it did is it checked the download model function to see if the weights were already there and since the weights were already there, it moved to the llama CPP inference function to start generating the response for that question that I prompted. So we're gonna go ahead and let this run for a bit. We'll come back and we'll look at the final results. And we're back. So here is the response. Here are all the thinking tokens and the final response of there being three R's in the word strawberry. And of course that's correct. And if I head over back to my dashboard, you'll notice that the application has shut down. That's because it's completed its inference. Notice how it automatically terminated as soon as the job was done. No manual shutdown needed, no wasted compute, no unnecessary charges. That's inference when you need it on demand that goes down to zero when you're not using it. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. You can read through this example and more at modal.com where you can also sign up for modal and try it for free. If you have any questions, drop them below. Thanks and I'll talk to you next time.